In today's video, we'll discuss how to set up the AimTrack light gun on the At Games Legends Ultimate cabinet. We'll go through the entire setup process, and at the end of this video, you'll find several gameplay examples. So, kick back, relax, and let's dive right in. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Adding light guns to the Legends Ultimate has been something that has been asked of me for quite some time. The ALU only supports the AimTrack light guns, so I went ahead and ordered one so we can see how it works and what's needed to get it set up. In the box we have a light bar that has a USB 2.0 connector and we'll need to mount it above the monitor. Additionally, we have the power cable. The reason why this includes a power cable and adapter is because I ordered the model with recoil support. That is, when you pull the trigger, you'll receive feedback. There is also a model without recoil that is cheaper if you prefer. Now we'll get it out of the packaging. The included power adapter is 24 volts and 4 amps. The light gun itself has, of course, a trigger button and a red button on the left and right side. The aesthetics of the gun look really nice with a decent weight and feels very solid and durable. At the end, we have the power input for the recoil and a USB 2.0 connector. The included documentation is a bit lacking when it comes to the Legends Ultimate, but no worries if you visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash al aimtrack you'll find a written guide that covers everything you'll find in this video and much more. I would also like to thank Roth Saraf on the Legends Ultimate subreddit who created an excellent guide that was very helpful in getting the aimtrack gun working on the Legends Ultimate. We'll go ahead and plug in the power adapter but there are a few more things that you're going to need to use the aim track gun with the Legends Ultimate. Now let's discuss some suggested accessories. You're going to need a way to mount the light bar sensor below the marquee area. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, many public libraries can print them for you cheaply or even free in some cases. This set I printed and will affix to the cabinet like this. But that's not quite everything you're going to need. I also ordered 20 sets of black command strips. These worked out well for the light bar, as you'll see in a moment. I didn't trim them, but you could for a cleaner look. I also picked up a pack of 100 self-adhesive clips. I've used them in several other projects in the past and really like them for keeping external cables organized. If you'll be adding a holster to the side of the cabinet for the light guns, then this off-brand Velcro should do the job nicely. I also 3D printed two of these gun holsters that worked out perfectly. There are different models that you can choose from, but these will print in under four hours, which is the max that most libraries will print. And lastly, you're going to need a small powered USB hub. This Sabrent 4 port hub worked out well during my testing, and it does have on-off switches for each of the USB ports. All of these items that I used may be found in the accessory section of the guide. The link is below. Now we'll discuss the installation process. This is the approximate location we'll be installing the light bar. First, we'll turn the power off to the ALU, then remove all screws except the one at the very top middle. Now we'll remove the last screw while carefully grabbing the panel. There are wires attached, so be very cautious here. We'll unplug the power cables and ethernet. I do have the bit LCD on this unit, so I'll slide it up and carefully set it on the control panel so it doesn't slide. We'll next feed the USB cable for the light bar down the back and loosen the three screws a bit to leave more room for the space between the cabinet and the bit LCD. Now we'll reposition the bit LCD and make sure there is enough length to mount the sensor bar and without pinching the sensor bar USB cable. Underneath the sensor bar, we'll remove the red backing and then go ahead and affix one of the two 3D printed mounts. Then we'll repeat the same for the opposite side of the sensor bar. Now we'll take two command strips and go ahead and press them together and remove the backing on one side and affix it to the back of the 3D printed mount. We'll repeat the same for the other mount. You can also trim the command strip for a cleaner look. Now remove the backing to both command strips then position the mounts at the top edge of the monitor and push in firmly to make sure the command strips have a good grip on the cabinet. Let's zoom in a bit so it's easier to see. 
Cable management is rarely a thing with me, as longtime viewers of this channel already know, but I do like these clips for at least looking like I tried. They look good and provide a little extra support. Next, we'll mount the powered USB hub to the left side of the cabinet. Again, we'll use a set of command strips and affix it to the back of the hub. I'll place the hub roughly in the middle of the cabinet and make sure the USB cable has enough length to reach the USB 2.0 port on the front of the Legends Ultimate. I'll then add a few more clips to tidy things up. Instead of drilling or cutting a notch on the side for the sensor bar USB cable, I opted to just not place any screws on the bottom right of the cabinet. Go ahead and reconnect the power and ethernet cable and position the back panel and install a single screw at the top middle to hold it all in place. Then install the remaining screws, avoiding the lower right as to not pinch the sensor bar cable too tightly. One important point to mention, after you connect your light gun to the hub, make sure the hub is not plugged into the Legends Ultimate before powering it on. Otherwise, you'll get a no signal message. Instead, plug it in once the Legends Ultimate has fully booted. Let's discuss the software configuration. Go to the light gun configuration section of the guide and then click the link for the AimTrack configuration utility installer to download it. Double click the installer and if you see this dialog, select more info and run anyway. Now just click next four times and then the finish button. Now plug your light gun into an available USB port on your Windows PC. Now we'll launch the utility by clicking the Windows button and right click the Ultimark AimTrack icon and select Run as Administrator. The firmware that shipped with my gun was version 9.21. We'll talk more about that in a moment. For now, move up to the Button Assignment section and set the six buttons according to what you see here. It's also in the written guide. Once done, click the Apply Changes button, wait a few seconds, and click the Close button. It's a good idea to relaunch the application and just verify that all the settings were saved properly. Now let's discuss the firmware update process. Again, we'll relaunch the Ultimark AimTrack utility by clicking Run as Administrator. And everything I've read indicated that version 9.21 of the firmware wouldn't work with the Legends Ultimate. However, during my testing, it did work fine on two different light guns. Regardless, version 9.20 is likely the ideal version to use, and I'll show you how to update the firmware. At the top, click the Setup tab, then click the Upgrade Firmware button towards the bottom, and click the OK button. From there, the main application will close, and a small dialog will appear for the update. Click the button, select Firmware File, and in the folder you'll see aimtrack920.ufw. That's the version we'll use to update. The firmware version 9.21 that you see here is the one that I copied to this folder myself. I have links to both on the guide, but let's go with version 9.20, select it, and click the open button. The firmware update will take a couple of minutes, and you'll hear the USB disconnect and reconnect sound in the process. You'll also see the message no upgrade detected or upgrade complete. That's your cue that you can close out of the firmware upgrader utility. Again, it's a good idea to relaunch the application and just verify that the firmware version is reported as expected. In this case, the version is 9.20 and the firmware update was indeed a success. Now we'll discuss how to calibrate the light gun. Make sure that the Legends Ultimate is powered off and the USB cable from the USB hub is disconnected. Then power on the machine. While it's booting, we'll move over to the hub and plug in the sensor bar. Now we'll plug in the power for the recoil. Again, this is an optional feature. Then plug in the light gun itself. With ALU fully powered up, we can now plug in the USB hub into the USB 2.0 port. By the way, it will not work in the USB 3.0 port. I tried it. On the ALU, navigate over to the settings tab and on page 4 you'll find the light gun calibration utility. Go ahead and press A, then back up about 5 feet or so and press and hold the left button on the gun for about 7 seconds until the dot on the screen moves to the upper left. When the dot stops, 
go ahead and press the trigger button while aiming at the dot and repeat for the top right and bottom middle. Then press B on the control panel to back out and load up a game. After the success with the black aim track light gun, I went ahead and ordered a second. My son picked out the color for this one and I think it looks pretty sharp. The setup was the same for this gun as we discussed previously, however there are a few additional steps to get it working fully. You'll want to go into the Setup tab, click the Set ID to 2 button, and then click the OK button. Once you do this, you'll hear the Windows USB disconnect and reconnect sound. You may also find that the program becomes unresponsive. If that happens, just terminate it here or using Task Manager and then relaunch the application. Initially, it will indicate no device, but if you click the device dropdown and select device 2, it will show the firmware version being run and you can update the firmware, etc. You'll calibrate this additional gun with a few more steps. First, unplug the USB cable to the first gun, unplug the powered USB hub, and then power off the Legends Ultimate and power it back up. Plug in the second gun into the powered hub, and once the Legends Ultimate is fully booted, plug in the USB cable from the powered hub into the USB 2.0 port on the Legends Ultimate. Then calibrate the gun as shown earlier. All of these steps are in the written guide for easier reference. Before we jump into some gameplay, I want to make a few comments about the Aimtrack light gun as it relates to the Legends Ultimate. First of all, if you're not playing any light gun enabled games, go ahead and disconnect the powered USB hub so that the gun doesn't interfere with arcade controls. Overall, I found the guns responsive. The tracking seems to be very good. Where I did have some issues is when I had two guns connected, a few times there appeared to be a disconnect. Not sure if it's on the Legends Ultimate side or the gun, but something I encountered and wanted to mention. There is a troubleshooting section in the guide, and I do mention it there. Any additional details I find on it will be in the written guide. But overall, it has been a great experience playing light gun games on the Legends Ultimate. Have you used the Aimtrack guns with your Legends Ultimate or thinking about it? Please comment below. I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. I also want to show the holster we discussed earlier mounted to the side of the cabinet. They worked out really well and they provide an easy and quick way of storing the guns. Aside from the gameplay, that brings us to the end of this video. If you have enjoyed or found this video helpful, please show your support by liking the video, subscribing if you want to see more, and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to talking with you again very soon. Let's check out some light gun enabled games. The Legends Ultimate 1.1 cabinet that we have here does include some light gun enabled games. Let's check out a few of them. Additionally, you can use CoinOps X 5.5 is still alive running from a USB stick and play many more light gun games. When you scroll to the right of ways, you'll find a category specifically for light gun games. The first one we'll check out is my son and I playing Terminator 2 Judgment Day with two light guns.
Thank <laughs> you. 